the book channel online. Hello, book lovers. I'm Stephanie Harris Byers. Welcome to the book channel online. Today we're speaking with Camille Acker, author of Training School for Negro Girls. Welcome, Camille. Hi, thank you. The book channel online is pleased to have you with us today to talk about your book. Well, it's a collection of short stories, um, all based in DC, which is my hometown, and um, all about young black girls or young women. I read it's a love letter to DC. It is. Uh, I had a wonderful growing up in DC. Um, I think it's a really interesting in the fact that, you know, for a long time it was predominantly black city, um, but that in terms of intersections of class, Obviously, D.C. being a seat of power, um, but, you know, lots of ordinary people living their lives there. Um, I had the experience of being able to grow up in a city that was um, exposed to a lot of different people um, while still feeling very cosmopolitan in that way, while still feeling like a, like a smaller town. Um, so I wanted to write work that would speak to that kind of experience. Yeah. Training School for Negro Girls, why that title? <laughs> In the early 1900s, there were um, a lot of schools that were opened, um, you know, for black people like, you know, reconstruction had, uh, had failed us. And, um, and, you know, people, black people were really looking for a way to, um, to educate ourselves, you know, to educate our own. And so Nanny Helen Burroughs um, opened a school in, um, in 1909 in DC, in Northeast DC, had, you know, classes that were everything from like domestic work, but, um, you know, moral sort of uh, leadership. I, I, I've always been interested in that sort of period of black history because I always think it was, it was close enough to, uh, to slavery for us to remember, you know, what it was, right, and to know someone who had been enslaved. And yet there was this hopefulness about, you know, what was, what was to come. But I think, you know, for a lot of those schools, what they were still trying to do, um, which sort of in the model of Booker T. Washington was like the idea that, you know, we wouldn't rock the boat too much, that if we would sort of still be in domestic work, um, you know, that would be the answer um, and, and white people wouldn't, wouldn't be afraid of us. And um, I think there's still a way, you know, that um, black people have to navigate all of these ways of how can we both be safe you know, like with our bodies, economically safe, but how can we also be free? You know, how can we be the people that we are in the world, you know, without having to worry about threats, you know, coming at us? And so that idea of like a training school, you know, how we've been trained, how we think about the world, um, I think it ends up playing out in sort of smaller ways in these women's lives and women and girls, um, but still that idea of, you know, you're black and you're female, and what does that mean about how people see you in the world, how you see yourself, how you operate in the world? Um, all of those questions I, I really wanted to be able to tackle in the book. So that's when I started writing the stories, I thought, I think this is the title for this book. So tell us specifically of some of the, the, the stories in the storyline. There are young girls, uh, girls as young as eight in the book um, who are um, navigating, um, one girl who's sort of navigating her mother's depression. Um, and then there are, as uh, a teacher in DC public schools, um, who's navigating her own sort of identity issues, um, where it intersects with one of her students. Um, and I have, a, an, a woman who's in her forties, who's taking care of her elderly mother, um, who is trying to, um, figure out how to be intimate with people, um, how to be more vulnerable. Um, and, and the stories also go from in a lot of different um, eras. So everything from the 80s up, up until the Obama era. And how do they get over their struggles? Part of what happens is that they have to first recognize that something is changing. Um, and that's sort of where a lot of them begin. There's some moment that um, they see a turn happening in their lives. Um, and then I think, like all of us, you know, how do you then navigate when something is, is different, when changing, when changes occur? Um, so they, I think, ultimately sort of rise to the occasion of 
of those changes. Um, but by no means are there sort of easy solutions or easy answers to um, to those navigations, to those new things happening to them. So um, I think they try to do it, most of them with some humor and some grace. Um, and then some of them navigate it with anger um, and trying to find their way out of that into um, to being more of who they are. Choose one to, to tell us the storyline. Sure. So there's one I have about a, a TSA agent um, who is really looking for that job to um, change her life and change the life. She's a single mother um, living with her own mother. Um, and she's wanting being a TSA agent to sort of um, you know, get them into their own apartment to provide this kind of stability for her. Um, she's very invested in how people see her. And so being a TSA agent is also really important to her as sort of being in that uniform, um, being a person who is, um, you know, helping people to travel a lot of people in or out of this country in some ways. Um, and so she is grappling with sort of those internal issues of who she is and how to be powerful in her life. Um, when she's confronted by one passenger who um, denies her that power, um, who sees herself as more powerful than she is. And in that instance, um, the character has a hard time uh, being confronted by that um, and, and reacts in, in anger. Um, but I, so the ending of that story is sort of not a, a happy one. Um, she end, ends up being fired. Um, but I think on the other side of it, I sort of see it as, um, as a moment for her to um, perhaps embark in a, in a different way, um, you know, to think about who she is in a way that has nothing to do with that uniform um, and who that means of her like as a mother and as a daughter, um, as a black woman. Um, so I, I think people probably come to the end of that story and are very sad for her best. That's the character's name. Um, but I think that it's also probably a, a good moment um, and that um, in a way that characters begin to live uh, for the writer, you know, even after you've written them, that uh, I imagine that past that story, she's she's writing her own story, a, a different and maybe better story for herself. And the symbolism of being a TSA agent. I mean, that's an interesting line of work you chose for her. Yes, well, it was inspired. I was actually flying from National Airport, um, at, you know, after having seen my parents. And um, I heard a TSA agent say that she'd never flown before. And I was so struck by that, like, you know, here in this job, right, that that's what, you know, you're guiding people on their flights, but that you'd never flown before. And so I started thinking about that. And um, truly, uh, that story, I probably wrote um, the fastest of all the stories that are in the collection. I, I wrote it in like three hours. And I just heard Bess's voice so strongly um after hearing that remark that i um she just really took on a life of her own um and and that's this is the story that i ended up writing well i want to say thank you camille thank you so much this was wonderful we really appreciate you taking the time and we want to wish you continued success with your writing and thank you for watching the book channel online you can buy training school for negro girls on QBR.com through our affiliate partnership with Amazon. I am Stephanie Harris Byers. Watch us on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. As the pages turn, we'll see you next time on the Book Channel Online. The Book Channel Online.